My wife and I's favorite restaurant uh, is dead. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, we used to go to this place uh, kind of up in, uh, in, in Orem, Utah, and great food, great experience, great ambiance. And a uh, matter of fact, we got to where we knew the waiters, uh, or the wait staff's uh, name, and they bring us in, and yet it went out of business. And it was really disappointing. It, why do restaurants seem to fail? Uh, and interestingly enough, restaurants don't have the highest failure rate out there. I, had, I would have guessed that that would be uh, one of the higher failing uh, industries, but it, it actually isn't. There are a lot of industries that fail at a higher rate, but there are enough restaurants that go out of business that it's worth asking, why, that, what is the real reason restaurants fail? And uh, before we get to it, because there is, there's actually one reason. It's one primary reason, and it's not the one you think of. But before we go there, if you're new to the channel, my name is Jason Peterson with Noggin, and uh, we turn what's in our head into processes. Uh, and that's what we're learning to do together in this channel. And the reason is that good systems and good processes are the key to freedom in any business, the key to success, really. Uh, and that's especially true for restaurants. So uh, let's talk about, first let's talk about what, according to a Forbes article, a uh, recent Forbes article, uh, the item that most people would have put uh, down, I think, is location. And actually that was like sixth or fifth on the list as far as culprits for why restaurants fail. Um, all of the top reasons uh, were, you know, things like food costs, poor uh, leadership vision, uh, poor training, uh, like no, insufficient training for staff, uh, which led to inconsistencies, you know, so inconsistent food experience, inconsistent just overall ambiance and experience. All of those can be bundled under the same problem, insufficient systems, uh, insufficient processes. And so uh, that's the number one reason, according to this research, or at least my interpretation is I was looking through these, I was like, okay, why does food costs get out of control? There's no system in place to check and then do pricing changes or even just negotiation with our suppliers to make sure that the food costs stay within a reasonable margin. And so if there's no system, uh, no cadence that is checking that fairly regularly, the food costs start to get out of control. And before you know it, your margins have eroded down to uh, nothing or consistency of experience. Uh, a lot of times restaurants, they, they're, you know, they have a lot of turnover because you know, people are kind of coming and going. And so the training ends up being like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. So the owner maybe takes a lot of time uh, to set the ambiance up and make sure that the music is at the right uh, volume and the lights are on at the right time and all of that. And then they train somebody and maybe 5 or 10% of that gets missed. And then that person trains somebody and maybe another five or 10%. By the time you get three or four generations down, if there's nothing documenting or showing the right way to do it, or any kind of checklist that says, here are the things to check, then you're probably going to have eroded down to where the experience becomes uh, you know, much less desirable than what it started. And that's what happened with our restaurant. The, the one that we loved was one uh, where they were really wonderful. They had a little bit of turnover and it just eroded to where, this is another big one, the consistency of food quality. When we, the first, I don't know, 15 or 20 times we went there, the food was consistently good. Uh, we knew what we were going to get. We knew what to expect. But then in time, it just seemed like it went downhill. And it didn't seem like it went downhill because they were using cheaper ingredients. They just weren't using the same processes to create these uh, meals. And so we started to notice it, and it didn't take much longer. Less than a year later, the restaurant went out. We weren't the only one who noticed it. And so lack of systems oftentimes means that that, especially if there's high turnover, a lot of times that means that the experience uh, becomes inconsistent, the food quality becomes inconsistent, um, attention to detail, and then frankly, regulatory problems uh, or breakdowns, maintenance issues. You don't clean your ice maker, and now all of a sudden you have to deal without it, or the inspector shows up, you don't even know they're there, and you haven't been on a, a cadence of maintenance, and so you get dinged, and that's expensive um, and, and uh, really problematic. And so lack of systems was the overwhelming uh, the reason that these business, these restaurants were failing. And that's good news, because what that means is that you can put systems in place uh, and fix a lot of these things. It's not as hard as it sounds. Um, but location was not the reason. It's usually that there aren't sufficient systems to make sure that things persist 
And that's why, so for example, with noggin, pulling it out of your head, if it all rests in the owner's head, then you're almost guaranteed to run into that problem at some point. You just can't live forever. You can't train every single person or unless you just stay a tiny little restaurant. And so uh, over the next little while, we'll be releasing more videos on how to use tools like Noggin to take stuff out of your head and put it into a process so that that consistency, that attention to detail uh, is excellent every time.